Well, I'm glad you're here today. Why don't you take your Bible and just turn over to First Samuel chapter 18. I just want to say thank you for all the ladies who are in the meeting who prepared and, and got ready for our meal today. It is Pastor Appreciation Day. And uh, so thank you so much for that. And I do want to invite you to stay and fellowship with us. Please do. Please, please do. It, uh, if you want to appreciate me, you can appreciate me by staying in fellowship. It would really bless my heart. We, we do have, a, we're going to have another time of fellowship in, in, in November and another in December. So we're trying to get back to that because we need to be together. Amen. Now more than ever, I'm so glad that you are here and you're not out there. Miss Janice, for the real boat, I didn't feel like being here today. And I want to say to you, thank you for coming today. And I'm just praying that God bless you. He sees your heart. Your heart is turned toward Him. That's why you came. And God sees it. And God wants to bless you today. And I'm just asking Him to bless you. In the name of Jesus, to let His Spirit overflow you. With his fire presence this morning. We're still praying for Brother Darrell. Yes. <clears throat> and uh, we're believing that you're the healer of the Lord. Lord God. But today I'm going to talk about killing giants. And uh, everybody's heard about. Oh, I forgot um, this shirt. Almost. God, you were waiting on me, man. Why don't you throw something in here? This shirt is going to take the kids upstairs. And uh, we're thankful for this shirt. And this Lisa. Continue to pray for Lisa's son. Uh, I, I asked her the other night, I said, what's his name? All I know is Squeaky. But that's what they call him, Miss Squeaky. His name's Quinn, but... Uh, he got home yesterday, and I uh, believe he'll be okay. He was in an accident and had a life fighter and repairs. So, we're going to keep praying for him. We, we all got giants in our life. Now, we, we talk about, everybody knows the story of David and Goliath, and it's been used. The, that analogy is used all the time. But it's in the Word of God, and there's some things I've got. I believe God wants to speak to us this morning because we all got giants. I mean, we got giants. We all have them. And it seems like, <clears throat> as we talked about the other week, we, we go through these severe hardships and some things that we walk up on, they seem bigger than life itself. Bigger, they're, so, they're bigger than a mountain. It seems like we can't climb it, can't get there with that these obstacles, and some of them are just temptations that come our way and we can't overcome the temptation. We all, we all have those. And your first step to, to, to overcoming them is saying, I've got them. It's admitting that you have them. Yes. And, but the Apostle Paul said that God has made a way of escape for us. Amen. Amen. In 1 Corinthians 10, 13, it says, No temptation has overtaken you that is not common to man. So we're not the only one that's ever been through it. But you know what? I don't need somebody telling me that when I'm going through it. How about you? I'm going to be real this morning. Y'all just need to loosen up, lock up, because I'm going to be real. How many don't want, would say, when somebody, when you're going through something, somebody come to comfort you and say, well, you know everybody goes through that. <laughs> I don't want to hear that. Do you? Because I'm going to feel like I'm the only one ever going through it. <laughs> and then we have a bad, especially us preachers, we got a bad habit of uh, when somebody's going through something, we start telling them what we're going through. And I'm like, I have to try to be careful not doing that. You know, well, you know, I'm you know, somebody says, well, I'm dealing with this. Well, I'm dealing with something that's very simple, blah, blah, blah. And then I'm talking, and I made it all about me. Nobody wants to do that. And I'm not trying to do that this morning. But the Apostle Paul said that we, what we go through, 
is not new and that everybody has this, this common because we're men. But he said, God is faithful. Aren't you glad? God is faithful. And he won't let you be tempted beyond your ability. But the temptation, he will also provide, look at this, a way of escape. Oh. And we always say, and I've said it so many times, and you have too, and I've even talked about it behind this pulpit. We always say, God won't put no more on you than you can handle. Praise the Lord. But that's not biblical or scriptural. Because God ain't putting it on you most of the time. You're putting it on yourself most of the time. Sometimes you, uh, it's your choice of are either the devil. But <clears throat> he does make a way of escape. Yes. I'm so glad. So whatever we're going through, it's not unique to us. It's not something that other people I haven't gone through. And it, but it can be a giant to us. Yes. That's what I'm talking about. Amen. What you're going through right now, what you're going through, Right now, to you, it can be a giant. You're facing it. Whether it's a medical thing, where it's a, a rape, uh, some type of relational thing, or some other thing that is a giant. Yeah. And the thing about when we go into looking at the life, and that's what we're going to be looking at this morning, is the thing that made Goliath so intimidating obviously was his side, right? Look at what it says in 1 Samuel 17, 4. And there came out from the camp of the Philistines a champion named Goliath of Gath, whose height was six cubits and a span. That's roughly nine foot. Okay, let me give you a, an example. How many ever remember Andre the Giant, the wrestler? Anybody remember? Yes. If you don't, go Google him, you can see. <laughs> Huge man. He was seven foot four. Goliath had two feet on him. Just think about that. Now kind of get it in your mind. And he said, and it, and it goes on to talk about he had a helmet of bronze on his head. And he was armed with a coat of mail, and the weight of the coat of, was 5,000 shekels of bronze. And he had a bronze armor on his legs and a javelin of bronze slung between his shoulders. The shaft of his spear was like a weaver's being big around, and his spearhead weighed 600 shekels of iron, and his shield bearer went before him. In other words, he caught your attention, didn't he? That's what giants do. That's what your giant does. It catches your attention. It, it overwhelms your senses. It fills your eyesight. Every waking moment is filled with this giant. That's what happened to Israel. And they all were feared. They were in fear. They were stunned and shocked because this giant was so big. And when they saw him, they said, who can beat him? Who can come against him? It, it, this is insurmountable. No, we don't have anybody. We're all average height. You know, during the Second World War, <clears throat> the average height of a soldier was five foot nine inches. Did y'all know that? That's just two generations ago. So think about the average height of the Israelites, probably about five, six, or five, seven. And this man was double their size. That's what giants do. They fill your senses. They fill your eyesight. They consume you with their size, and it's intimidating when you walk into it. Huh? Some people walk into their job every day and they see a giant. Come on. They don't want to be there. They hate it. There's somebody that some of you walk into your house and you see a giant. I'm being real this morning. Your husband, your wife, your girlfriend, your boyfriend. It, it just concerns you. And the other thing about this giant, 
was not only his size, but it was also the way he presented himself. See, that will intimidate you. Once a giant knows that he has intimidated you, he'll continue to uh, intimidate you. See what he says? He says in verse 8, And he stood there, look at what he's doing, and shouted to the ranks of Israel. Why have you come out to draw up for battle? Look at that. He said, why are you even out here? Am I not a Philistine and you're just these Israelites? Are you not servants of Saul? Choose a man for yourselves and let him come down to me if he's able to fight with me and kill me, then we'll be your servants. But if I prevail against him and kill him, then you shall be our servants and serve us. And the Philistine said, I defy the ranks of Israel this day. Give me a man that we may fight together. In other words, not only his size, but his persona, the way he presented. That's, see, most of the time, it's just a big bark. First Peter 5, verse 8 says, Satan goes around like a roaring lion. Intimidating. Intimidating. And that's what he, that's what your giant does. Your giant intimidates you. And you can put a name on the giant, whatever name you want to put on that giant. It could be, it could be temptation, it could be fear, it could be anger, it could be uh, uh, it could be some person that you that you hate. One of the greatest ones is unforgiveness. Yeah. That's right. And it just keeps towering up and getting worse and worse and worse. And then this is what happens to Israel. This is what happens to us. And it said in verse 24, And all the men of Israel, when they saw the man, they fled from him and were much afraid. They were dismayed and afraid. And that's who I'm talking to this morning. People who are dismayed and afraid. It's too much for you. The size of it is too complex for you. You can't figure it out. You can't see one end of it from the other. You don't know where it came from. You don't know how it's going to go. You don't know what you're going to do. You, you don't know how to deal with this situation. It dismays you. That means that you can't even think straight. And what follows that then is fear, afraid, dismayed and afraid. I know a lot of people in the world like that right now. How about you? Amen. I said, how about you? Amen. Have you ever been there? Don't, yeah. don't answer. Are you there right now? Don't answer. It's between you and the Lord. Yeah. But I believe there are people in here who are right there, right now. You're dismayed and you're afraid. And the giant is roaring. And the giant is saying, come up and fight me. And you tried, you have attempted to fight this giant before. But when you got to it, you said, it's hopeless. I can't fight him. He's too big for me. It's too hard for me. I've got no way to, to, to win this battle. And you leave. But remember what we said earlier. That God, through the Apostle Paul, said, He's made a way of escape for us. Yes. And this way of escape is not to run from the giant, but to conquer the giant. Right. And to kill Amen. the giant. I want to give you I want to give you something today that's going to help you. And I didn't, we didn't plan this. Debbie didn't know I was going to talk about this this way. But you saw this little baby up here. Look back. I want you to realize this this morning. Goliath started out just like that. He started out as a baby. Now he might have been a big baby. But we don't know. It could have been an average size baby. But he started out small. He wasn't always a giant. And that's how giants get in our life. Are you hearing me today? That's how they get in there. They start out small. But that little baby can't hurt nothing. But one day, he 
go from that size to that size to that size to that size. And then one day they're a child. They always start small. Well, are you listening to me? Yeah. Yeah. <clears throat> he, he, he started out as a child. And then he grew into a giant of a man. Your giant started small. It started with something small. And because it has not been defeated, it has grown. And the intimidation has grown. And now, it is overwhelming you. Goliath was just a baby. And then he became a legend. A legend, don't you hear that? The thing about a legend is, a legend, a legend is usually bigger than what it actually is. Right. Hey, how I, I many hunters and fishermen and women are out in here? <laughs> you catch him? He about like that? You take him, put him upside the camera where it looks like he's that big? Come on, somebody. <laughs> legends, <laughs> legends build with time. Yeah. Okay? <clears throat> and, and your giant <clears throat> has associated with him things that really are not true. You think nobody can live this. Nobody can beat this. Ain't nobody ever overcome this. Nobody's ever got through this. But I hear, I'm here to tell you that people have and people are and people still are. Yeah. And this is a room full of people right here that many of them have overcome their giants and have killed their giants. Yeah. They heard the legend they, they, they heard the tales, the tall tales, but one day they saw the truth. This thing started out as a baby. And I don't even go over that time. Saul told David in verse 33, you're not able to go against the Philistine to fight with him. You are but a youth, and look at this, and he has been a man of war from his youth. Saul believed the legend, just like everybody else did, just like you believe what somebody told you. There's people that told you, don't go to church. But no one they're just a bunch of hypocrites. <laughs> now we're not hypocrites. Because I'm going to tell you right now, I'm fallen so many times and had to get up, but thank God for Jesus Christ. I'm not telling you I'm, I'm all that and everything else. I'm telling you that Jesus Christ saved my soul and set me free yes. and killed the giants in my life. Yes. Glory yes. to God. <clears throat> you know, I'm not telling you that. And then they'll tell you, but it ain't going to do you no good. No, how? You go on and try. You're going to come out just like you went in. You're just going to have wasted your time. Come on, somebody. Because there's legend to it. That's why Saul believed it. The king believed it. He believed it. He said, man, he's been fighting ever since he was a kid. You can't beat him. But we know that David responded and said, oh, let me have it. <laughs> Here's the thing. These things start out small. And we don't take them serious. We don't see them as a threat until they get bigger and bigger and bigger with the passing of time. And that's how sin works. It starts in a way that doesn't seem so threatening. Oh, come on, somebody. Let's be real with that. Every time I say, let's try. You thought in your mind, how, what can it hurt? It's natural. It's the birds and the bees, the flowers and the trees. We just don't, you know, what's wrong with it? It starts out that way. Just remember that Delilah brought down Samson. Delilah means delicate. Delicate. Oh, she just, man, she's so pretty. God is going to appreciate it. Delicate as a flower. 
she brought it down. Right. Because he underestimated it, and that's what you do with your time. They start out small. Mm -hmm. And you take them for granted. You underestimate it. And then it happens. Yeah. Listen, we always, we're always waiting for a snake to come up to us and offer us an apple. Anyway, that's what we're doing. <laughs> Well, that's what we're doing. And we say, well, I see that snake. I know not to take that out. And ain't how it works, is it? Where it's small, comes in, looks harmless. It starts out, but once it gets a root, once it begins, and over time, it grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows and grows. And grows. Until you are dismayed and afraid. It's got you. How many? How many said that before? This has got me and I can't put it. This has got me and I can't get loose from it. I got a tiger by the tail. I don't know what to do. I got this on my back and I can't get it off. But it started out fun. It started out seemingly harmless. That's the way sin gets in there. It don't come as a serpent and a Apple comes and it begins to grow. And then when, you, when, when it grows, it gets you that, to that point. And I want to give you a scripture again this morning. One of my favorites, First John 4, 4. I just want to remind you, no matter how big your giant is, no matter how loud he roars, no matter how strong and, uh, and invincible he looks, 1 John 4, verse 4 says that greater is he that is in you than he that is in the world. God is bigger than your giant. He is in control. He's more powerful. And so this is what happens. Now, I talked about Andre the Giant a while ago. And I used to watch wrestling with my father-in-law. I, I miss him. I wish I could watch wrestling with him today, really. And we'd be watching it. <clears throat> and Because I would tell him, James, you know that stuff ain't real. That ain't fake. So they get it going pretty good, and he'd look at me and say, Donna, I'm going to tell you something. I know that's fake, but it, that felt that was real right there. <laughs> he said, he hurt that man. <laughs> he would tell me. Uh, but y'all know how it goes. If you're watching the wrestling, and whether it's a good guy or a bad guy, they they throw him over the top rope, and he hits down, and then he's up there walking around like this, like, I've got it. Right? Isn't that right? Yeah. Good guys do it, the bad guys do it. I got it. It's over with and everybody watching TV said, watch him, watch him, he's coming, he's coming. Come on, somebody. Everybody ever go out to the rest and make a and think about that? Everybody ever do that? That's the best $2 they ever spent in my life. Even a little old lady with him person would be trying to swing it. Watch him, he's coming. It's like the guy can't hear him. He comes and he puts on, you know, he drops him, you know. Well, I want to tell you something about your enemy. You can't, you gotta kill him. You gotta kill him. You gotta put him down. And David wasn't gonna allow that to happen. I think David, in dealing with them bears and lions, and maybe he had watched some wrestling, I don't know. But he said, I'm gonna take care of this thing because he might come put a suplex on me or something. Put a top elbow on me. Come on. <laughs> Oh, y'all know what I say. Y'all watch it, right? You just all watch that stuff. Hey, kid. David was not going to let that happen. Because in verse 51, it said, when he put him down, when he put him on the ground, with that stone right between his eyes, it says he ran over and stood over the Philistine and took his sword, whose sword? The Philistine's sword. And drew it out of the sheep and killed him. And cut off his head with it. Oh, glory to God. So he stabbed it and cut his head off. And when the Philistines saw that their champion was dead, guess what? They were dismayed and afraid. And 
and they read it. Resist the devil. Yes. Submit to God. Yes. Resist the devil. Yes. He's going to run. Yeah. I love that. Yeah. That's what you need to do when you're battling this giant. You need to kill it. You need to understand it starts small and you need to kill it. Because I'm going to tell you something. If you're tempted by something that is killing you, if it's killing you, if it's destroying your life, it can be a, a chemical, it can be a, some type of substance, it can be alcohol or whatever. Listen, get it out of your house. Amen. You know, if it's whiskey, pour it down the drain and bust the bottle. Find you another way to go where you got to go that'll get you around the liquor store you need right back. Right. Come on, somebody. You got to cut his head off. You got to kill him. Stop hanging out with your buddies that say, man, just take one hit. It ain't going to hurt you. I know you want this. I, you ain't even got to buy it. I'm going to give it to you. Don't hang out with them. You got to cut the head off. Because you you you've been you've been good for three months, <clears throat> but there he comes. He's sneaking up on you. He's about, about to drop it on you. And I'm like them little ladies out there at the Coliseum. I'm hollering, say, "Hey, look behind you! Look behind you! He's coming up on you!" I'm trying to tell you. I'm trying to warn you. I'll holler at the TV. You can't hear me. He's going to get you. I'm trying to tell you. Kill him. Be done with him. Because he's going to come back with you. If it's sexual sin, you better put some place, some barriers in your life. Boy, it got quiet, did it? <laughs> that might mean terminating the relationship. Because once you <laughs> listen, once it's once you get in the moment, come on, somebody. Right. I don't have to be too explicit. You all grown in here, and those that are not grown don't know what I'm talking about. Once you get into it, stand back right there. You know that. Right. You ain't strong enough to do that, right? Because right? Right. it it started out small. Well, we just gonna have coffee. Well, you know, I, for old times' sake, can I just get a hug? Yeah. Listen to me. Oh, listen to me. I know you're married. I'm married, but can I just get a little kiss right there? Mm -hmm. Ain't gonna hurt nothing. Y'all know. Once you get into it, yeah. they come. Yeah. <laughs> and then you say, "What? Well, you didn't kill it." somebody that you're attracted to and you just gonna hang out with them and say, now you know we're gonna hang out, but we're not gonna do that no more. If you, can't right. do, you may have to just kill. That's right. That's right. Put barriers up. You know what? You know what <clears throat> when my when my folks was courting, it was always a little sister in between. <laughs> right? The mom and dad wouldn't let him go nowhere and said, no, well, you can't go. Uh, you know, if it Katie, she dates a man, they would say, well, th th this was about us, but well, Molly's got to go with you. <laughs> and sit between you and him. <laughs> Are you here? Yeah. And mom and dad had a little sense. Yeah. No matter, because they done been down that dirt road. Y'all yeah. yeah. right. ain't here. Now, there's three verses I'm going to give you, and then I'm going to get off of it because it's in the head. That all three say that you need to run. See, you don't need to 
You don't need to run from the devil. He'll run from you, but you need to run from temptation. Mm -hmm. 1 Corinthians 10, 14, 15. Therefore, my beloved, flee from idolatry. I speak, to, I speak as to sense. In other words, I mean, what I'm saying to I'm speaking to people that got good sense. Y'all know what I'm saying is true. That's what he said as sensible people. He said, judge for yourself what I say. Y'all know it's true. 2 Timothy 2, 22 said, flee youthful passions. Youthful lust. He said, run from it. I heard a preacher say that one time, long time ago, never forgot. He said, you better run, boy. And I'm telling you, you need to run from them. If you're going to run, you better run from these youthful passions and lust. You better run. Sometimes it's, it's good just to run. Yes. If you'll run from it, you'll kill it. Are you hearing me today? Right. <clears throat> 1 Corinthians 6, verse 18. Flee. Flee. Run again from sexual immorality. Every other person, every other sin a person commits is outside the body, but the sexually immoral person sins against his own body. Now listen. You say, well, why are you judging? Well, I'm not judging. No, I'm that guy hollering out here. I'm that little old lady with a purse above her arm saying, better watch him. He's coming after you. Because everything you see in the Bible, everything you see there, when it says to flee from that, Jesus put it in there because he knows it's destructive to you. Yes. And it's going to keep him. You say you're trying to keep him from having fun. What's fun about an STD? Huh? What's fun about waking up in a ditch covered in your own bodily fluids? What's fun about being so hard up for something that you steal from your own mom. Yes. So you can get it again. Yes. That ain't fun. Jesus is trying to help. And it's not just those things. It's not just those things. You, you, <clears throat> one reason people don't come to church is because they hear what you say about everybody else that comes to church. <laughs> Sometimes it's better not to say anything. That's right. mm. If you can't say, if you're going to talk about somebody, keep your mouth shut. Mm. You're going to comment on everything, get rid of your social media account. Mm. It ain't just these things that we uh, preachers like to talk about. Say, drug, rock and roll. Come on, yes, somebody. Sir. That's easy. Yeah. But we're, we're talking about gossiping. We're talking about unforgiveness. Yeah, yeah. When you see somebody you, and you say, in your heart you say, I can't stand him. Yeah, yeah. What would Jesus, what, would he say that? What, I mean, how would you feel if Jesus looked at you and said, I can't stand you? Mm -hmm. Now he looks at me sometimes, Sharon, and says, I can't stand how you act. Right. But I love you so much, I'm going to die for you. Yeah. Bible says that you have love for one another. That you lay down your life for your brother. No one I'm going to stop talking about hope. Oh, yeah. Get real. God. It's easy to talk about these other things. Yeah. But we're going to kill stuff. Let's kill it all. Yeah. all right. Let's kill the backbiting. Yeah. Let's kill the gossip. Yeah. Let's kill the unforgiveness. Yeah. Let's, let's kill the self-righteous attitude. Yeah. Yeah. Then I'm judging you on what you do. But what I do, you can't say nothing about that. Come on, somebody. Let's kill it all. Let's kill the hate for somebody because they, they're different color than me. Yeah, yeah. Right. I've told you before, I believe that <clears throat> that that relationship between them, human beings ought to be confined, according to the Bible, between a man and a woman inside marriage. Yeah, that's, right. that's biblical scripture. I'm going to tell you something today. If you're getting out of what I'm saying that I hate you, if you're doing something otherwise, you're not hearing what I'm saying. But I don't hate you. I don't hate, I don't hate a man that loves another man. I'm a woman that loves another woman. I'm just 
yet and you guys not God's way. That's right. And it is sin. Yes, that's right. And I'm trying to tell you and help you Amen. that God, I'm letting you know that God can set you free from that sin. Yes, Glory to God. Amen. Amen. Because there's one scripture that always sticks out of my mind. We've all sinned and come short of the glory of God. Amen. God saved me and set me free. Amen. Uh, you know, I, I always want, I, I just want you to understand. Me saying it's wrong ain't just me. I, I can't judge you. I don't have the authority to judge you. Yeah, that's right. What I say to you ain't going to amount to a hill of beans. If I say you're wrong and you're going to die, blah, 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 blah. I, can't, I don't have any authority to back that up. That's right. But I'll tell you who does, Jesus. And one day we'll stand before him. And I'm going to stand before him. He's going to tell me, you either did this or you didn't do that. Are you here? Yeah. So you got to flee. we got to call sin, sin. That's what it is. I, I don't need to rationalize, rationalize it. I can't get that word out. I got it in my note. I can't get it out. <laughs> And say, well, it's just a weakness. It's my vulnerability. Everybody's doing it. It really doesn't matter but us. Yeah. Yeah. If we keep the things around us that we call weaknesses, don't be shocked when they come back and sneak up on you. You got to kill them, get rid of them, or run from them. We got to get rid of them. And I'm going to close. James chapter 4, verse 7. Submit yourself to God. You think it, it may be, some people uh, uh, paint that like it's a bondage. But I'm telling you, it's freedom. Yeah. If I give it to God and say, God, you got this. You got it. And I don't have to deal with it anymore. Is freedom. Resist the devil. Submit, then resist. In other words, I stay away from it. I wash my back, I kill it. I don't let it come back in. The devil will flee from you. Are you with me? Stand on you. Stand on you, please. This morning. Please, if you don't. Just allow me to have you to stand. So what? Preacher, why do you have to stand just to get you moving out of your position because some of you don't want to sleep on me. <laughs> when we stand, we stand together. We're all the same. Right where we are. Today, I, uh, this, this is weighing on me heavily uh, because I'm a man and I can get in the way of what God's trying to do. Amen. And I never want to do that. And I always want to say what He wants me to say, not what I, I think. That's right. So it had, that's the part that weighs on me. But today, we you about to read it with me? And just close your eyes for a moment. We do this too because we're just trying to let people have this moment alone with God. And you're not worried about somebody looking at you. I'm not even looking. You're not worried and you're not distracted looking at what other people are doing. It's just you and God. In the middle of this crowd of people, it's just you and him. And he's been talking to you. He was, he was speaking to your heart before you ever pulled up in this parking lot. Before you ever made the decision to come here today. He was speaking to you. And when you came in, you heard words in the music and in the preaching that said, that's what he's been saying to me. And he confirmed it to you. So why, then, would you not respond? It's not just emotion that you're feeling. You're not just getting caught up in the moment. That is Holy Spirit speaking to your heart. 
and saying to you, today I've come to set you free. Today I've come to help you heal the giant. Today I've come so that you might have life and you're no longer intimidated and in bondage. And I'm going to look around. I don't want anybody else to. But if that is you today, I want you to just start by lifting your hand and let God see it. I see two, I see three, four, anybody else. God is speaking to you today. God sees that, yes. God sees them all. I want to pray for you today. I want to pray for you today. I want God to help you so that when you walk out this door, you'll be free. And then you'll have the awareness of how to keep this enemy killed yeah. in your life. Would you let me pray for you today? What I'll have you do, I think, is just have everyone to lift their hands. Open up your eyes. Everybody open up your eyes. Everybody lift your hands. And for those of you who raise your hand, this is for you, and we're all going to pray with you. You ain't in this by yourself. I want you to know that. Holy Spirit is with you, but we're with you. We love you. We're walking out this thing together. So let's pray together. Father, I thank you for your son, Jesus Christ. I thank you for the, the power, the convincing power of the Holy Spirit. Yes. And he's already was working in my life today before I ever walked into this room. God, I thank you for that. And so, Lord, forgive me of my sin. Cleanse my heart. And make me whole. Lord, help me now with wisdom to put behind me those things that keep drawing me back in yes. to kill them once and for all. God, God where that whatever it might be, whatever form it takes, give me the power. And so, Father, I pray for every person here and do them with power of the Holy Spirit in the name of Jesus. And for those, Lord God, who have sinned and have come back to you, I say thank you. Your God of forgiveness. They repent. They cry out to you, call out to you. You say, I'm faithful and just to cleanse them, to forgive them, to cleanse them from all unrighteousness. I thank you for that. In the name of Jesus, say this with me. In the name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Now, I know you prayed that in your way. You put your hands down. I know you.